This is the K-State Radio Network and Agriculture Today. Kansas State University and several disciplines within this university are deeply involved in a major project in support of production agriculture and the cattle industry in specific, trying to find ways of preventing the appearance of Shiga toxin-producing E. coli bacteria in the beef production system. An update on that major project now. Joining us is K-State food microbiologist Randy Phoebus, who is one of those leading the charge at K-State in this effort. This has become in its short time, quite an endeavor, hasn't it? Well, yeah, it's uh, it's a big effort, but uh, this is kind of a complex problem that we're addressing, shigatoxin-producing E. coli in the beef system, and uh, particularly when you start looking at it from the production unit all the way to the consumer table, it's a big project. Mm-hmm. As you look at progress to date, and let's just stay with your area, the intervention technologies, right. Are there tangibles that are coming forth now that uh, can be put to work here, or are you still in the opening phases of the work? Well, we're, we're somewhat in the opening phases, but we've already done uh, some really uh, interesting, some very beneficial research. Uh, one of the things I'll say about this grant is, is we're working very closely with industry partners because we really need to be able to have access to production facilities, processing facilities, and so a couple of big processors have been working with us. We've uh, done a, a, a ground beef uh, trim decon study in a major uh, ground beef production plan already. Going to repeat that study uh, probably the first part of this coming year. Uh, we have uh, been working with a couple of industry partners uh, through our our uh, colleagues at the uh, Eastern Regional Research Center, Dr. Uh, John Luchansky and Dr. Anna Portafet to uh, validate how well various types of uh, sausage manufacturing uh, practices, fermented dry sausages, uh, what those uh, schedules do for the six adulterants that we really don't know that much about. So we've gotten that project already completed. Uh, We've been looking at uh, developing methods of applying kind of uh, a second generation of chemical uh, decon systems uh, using electrostatic spray technology, which we've got a system uh, built over here at uh, the Biosecurity Research Institute at K-State for doing that to carcasses, for carcasses. Uh, But we're going to also take that technology to trim and to subprimals. When we say electrostatic, this is really important because First of all, electrostatic kind of get, puts a fog of the chemical in the air that's charged, and it sucks it down just like you're painting a car onto the meat surface. So you get really good coverage, but it also allows us to use chemicals that would be too expensive to put on as a wash or a drench. And this is really important. It uh, allows us to use vastly smaller amounts of water than what's currently used in beef processing, and that's becoming such a huge issue to companies, particularly out in the Midwest. So all of these methods are resulting in a reduction or elimination of E. coli, by and large? We, we always work on the premise that uh, it, it depends on how much is there to begin with. Uh, we don't want to say that we're going to completely eliminate anything. But when you uh, control these organisms in the live animal, minimize their carriage into the processing plants, then you apply the technologies in sequence. And some plants are using seven or eight or ten intervention treatments in sequence. Well, then you can do a really good job of controlling those residual, very low sporadic numbers. Randy Phoebus has been our guest. He's a food microbiologist here at Kansas State, one of the principal investigators in this overall project. We'll have more in a moment. You're listening to Agriculture Today.